so I'm going to do a little char tool walkthrough. Before we get started, just in general, you start the event by getting a dark rune and converting it into a crystal forge dark rune in Ogrilla. And you get those dark runes from the Banish the Demons daily quest, which is available if you're honored or higher. And when you first get the quest, you'll get at least one dark rune right away, so then you can start doing it. After that, you'll get dark rune fragments and you can combine five in, of those into a dark rune or sometimes you'll get lucky and just get a dark rune. Um, some general tips before we start. Try to face the mobs when you're fighting them. This is mostly just so that you don't get dazed. It makes things some, somewhat difficult, especially in the second phase. Charged crystal focuses are useful when you're starting out. You can make these um, by combining shards with the depleted crystal focuses and I recommend getting a, f a few uh, while you're still learning it. It can help you get past the second phase and the, the third phase. Uh, zooming your camera out also helps a lot. That's what I do at the beginning of this video here. Um, and lastly, you know, practice makes perfect. Uh, sometimes R and G, R and G can make things tough and uh, just uh, more, the more practice, the more familiar you get with it, the easier to become. This is my strat that I use, and it works for me. I haven't, uh, I do this pretty regularly, so, so yeah. So let's get started. So this first phase, we're going to take control of the Belgard Destroyer, and right away, you see in red there, I use the uh, Smash Shield ability there, and I walk over to my favorite side. This is just a consistency thing. It makes it just like how I, it makes it so I do it like clockwork basically. So I start out just uh, mortal striking one by one. There's no need to AoE these or anything. Um, I always charge the fell imps and just use the, the smash shield on cooldown. And I just chill over here on this side. It starts out pretty slow, but then a lot more mobs spawn, and then we start to use the other abilities. At this point, more fell hunters start spawning. Um, I still typically single target these down for a while until, in a little bit here, I'll target this one way over here and then I'll do the whirlwind. Um, sometimes it stops, or at least it used to, if you killed the thing that you were targeting when you used it. So that's why I target the one that's pretty far away. And then, like I mentioned earlier, just always charge the uh, imps and keep on using smash shield on cooldown. I do this basically the exact same way every spawn. This last phase finishes um, because I smash the shield one more time and it goes to zero. It usually does when it's at 24%, but one time it didn't, so just be ready if it doesn't. But this time it did, so everything died, and then the boss comes out. This fight super straightforward, just 
basically spam mortal strike until he does a fell flame which he did this time so once he does a fell flame you'll see me click the third button in uh, in, re in red and uh, fear him um, the only time this is a difficult fight is if you resist the fear in which case you have to kind of run away and uh, charge him because that fell fire does a lot of damage I also usually start out with a charge but this time I just forgot but it doesn't really matter I typically never really need to use the charge crystal focus in this phase I don't even know what it does but I would recommend saving it till either this phase or the next one so for this phase, I start on the opposite side, and um, the main abilities here, they're kind of finicky. I think this is one of the harder phases. The fifth ability um, is something that's, that's kind of hard to get down. Um, there's a range to use it, and you try to want to use it at min range so you can stun everything. So this phase basically consists of uh, stunning things and then single targeting them down until the big guys show up. But um, the third button from the left is a range stun, and that's typically what I use to start out this, uh, this part here. And then I use that first ability, which does triple damage when they're stunned. And then I back up, let the other one get close, and then I stun both of them using that jump ability. And that's like a 10 second stun, so then I just kill them while they're stunned. As more things start coming, um, you'll see how the strat changes. But this is the first phase where things get a little, or the first spawn where things get a little different. I kill this one without using the, the jump, and it takes a few more swings. And then I stun one of these guys in the middle, and hit him once and then do the jump stun the others and then hit each of the others one more time because they uh, that ability also reduces the damage they do and then I just kill them um, and the next spawn will be uh, one of the more difficult ones that spawns one of the big guys so that consume essence um, that I tried to use there will just do a lot of damage to the little minions and also heal the demon so I use that more later on. So for this, I start out with a, an axe throw to stun this guy. And then I wait a second for all of them to get grouped up. And then I hit him once with the melee. And then do the stun, as you saw. And then just finish him off with the melee. Um, it gets kind of difficult if you don't get all of the underlings in a stun. Because they can make that big guy immune to all damage. So that's why I kind of wait to attack him with that melee attack because once I do damage to him then they um, back away to to shield him so that's the reason for that but if they do shield him then you just need to do a range stun on the underling before going back to the big guy but the big guy is the priority to kill the next spawn of those is going to be right up here in this corner And, uh, yeah, I basically take all of those the same way. I stun the big guy in the middle with the range attack. And then um, hit him once with the melee. And back away. Be sure to stun all of the, uh, the underlings. And then rinse and repeat. And, and do the, the flame breath to kill the rest. And every once in a while, you'll just want to run away from one of the higher life uh, underlings after you've killed the big guy and just uh, use that consume essence on them just to regain some of your health and you'll see me do that probably on this one see I hit this guy once and then I consume essence on that guy it's kinda hard to do it you gotta like run and strafe um, the movements really important on this one especially you don't want to get dazed here because it can screw up some of your rhythm I'd say this is probably the most difficult phase when you're starting out, um, but the last phase definitely can have some bad RNGs. So he tried to summon a cannon there, so when they do that, you just want to range stun them and uh, 
make sure they don't get the cannon out. If they do, just kill the cannon right away. And you saw me heal myself there again. The last big spawn is going to be right here. Same strategy. Just got to kill the big guy. If he stays up for too long, it's, it's bad news. However, this phase, the button on the far right consumes uh, charged focus, but it's actually really useful if you start to get overwhelmed. You'll fly up in the air and bombard everything, and I think you also reflect anything that comes up at you. So you can definitely use that if you need to. And that guy was trying to go heal, so I just barely caught him in the stun. If you'll see... Try to get a heal off, but all right, there it is. Stunned that guy trying to make a cannon, and then just fell fire these guys down. You'll take a decent amount of damage, but it's it's okay. Fell flames is weird, like whirlwind, where if you kill your target, it stops a lot of times. So now two underlings spawn and then the boss will spawn. Um, if you kill one of the underlings, which I do here, um, it's just part of my strat, then another one will spawn. So those are basically so you can heal yourself while you're fighting the boss. So I'll kill this one on the left and then uh, I'll just keep the other one up. I start off just getting a little heal off and I would recommend doing that, top yourself off. And then just leave this one alive and I just try to run away from him and not get dazed, but I did there. But it's all good. Now the boss comes out. Just try to keep her stun locked. Um, try to get both the underlings into the jump stun. Like I do there. And also her. And then you can fell flame and keep on punishing blow on her. And uh, she goes down eventually. That one tries to summon a cannon. So I... Hit him with the range stun, and then consume his essence for a heal. So just keep her stun locked, and it should go go down fine. I usually will kill that other underling, but this time I actually kill the boss before I kill him. But uh, it's no big deal. You can just kill him after you get the next avatar so now phase three is pretty simple not simple but there's just a lot of buttons but they're all once you get used to it the switching uh, essences then it's it's relatively easy so you want to start every phase or every boss fight of this phase in shadow so you can use that shadow aoe and the siphon life so those two um the siphon life is super important so you can heal yourself throughout the fights and then you want to switch after you do those two abilities you want to switch to fire uh, in almost every case and basically just kite everything so here I think I screw up and accidentally use the, the death blast. Or maybe it's the next boss. But yeah. Um, so Shadow Nova and then Siphon Life. Switch to fire and then just kite. This boss will put those um, traps in the ground. Just avoid those. I think they stun you. They're pretty easy to avoid. Uh, this boss also does a dark glare, which I'm not sure if... He did on me this time. But um, whenever that happens, if you can, then switch to your ice form and use ice block. And then a nova, <clears throat> and then an ice lance. Um, <clears throat> but this phase is pretty RNG heavy. So a lot of times if they do their big attack, sometimes you'll just switch into uh, you know, shadow or some other form and you won't be able to do it. But it's it's okay. The main thing is if you're in trouble to to go to shadow like I'm doing right now and hit the death blast so you can get healed because it'll heal you for quite a bit. There it heals me. Oh, it resisted actually, so I missed it. Um, 
something you always got to watch out for. Sometimes it'll resist and you'll do a siphon life again and then you'll lose that that shadow blast. And yeah, I'm going to take this dark glare. Ideally, I would switch to ice and then ice block so I would reflect the damage back. But um, yeah, it didn't happen. But here, I just go into shadow a little bit sooner than I usually do and get the death blast off. And that heals me up quite a bit, you'll see. So yeah, I'm 83% now, and then a Shadow Nova and a Siphon Life. Usually I would do a Siphon Life, but he died. So this I accidentally do a Death Blast while Siphon Life is on cooldown. So you want to basically switch back to Shadow every 30 seconds to do a Death Blast. So you can consume that Siphon Life. Um... And luckily, he actually resists it, so it doesn't do anything. But uh, uh, then you switch to fire, and then uh, so basically, the start is it. Uh, the start is the same every time, where you do a shadow nova, siphon life, then switch to fire. But this boss will just randomly charge you, like you saw. But other than that, you just kite him. Every time he charges you, you use the cleansing flame to get rid of that debuff, and then just keep on kiting. And I'll usually wait till he charges to switch back to Shadow to then uh, do the Death Blast, Shadow Nova, and then another Siphon Life. And be careful when you resist, because you can overlap your Siphon Life, like I said. There's the charge. Also, I set my character to a focus so I can see the debuffs. Um, they don't show up on my pet, but if they do for you, then it's fine, but... Um, I recommend doing it just so you can see all the debuffs. So yeah, just kite this guy out. It's pretty simple. The uh, ability to the far right on this character that takes the charge crystal focuses is pretty good on this guy as well as the, the previous. Um, it just buffs your character and you'll do a lot more damage and heal quite a bit more when you swift, when you use your death blast and things of that nature. So don't be afraid to use it in this phase either if you're getting low. So yeah, the cleansing flame clears that debuff, which makes you slow. I miss the uh, siphon life again, but it's not, not a big deal. As long as you start... The next phase above sixty percent, it's it's fine. Same thing, starting off in Shadow. Um, every time these eyes spawn, you'll want to, or at least I switch to Shadow and clear them out, and then uh, with a Shadow Nova, and then do the Death Blast Siphon Life rotation. Um, and that's, I think, the main thing for this fight. If you start to get low, I tend to go into Shadow um, more often to get those death blasts off, but um, if things are going well, then I typically wait till about 20 seconds is left on the siphon life and just stay in fire. But sometimes the RNG will be unforgiving here, so um, yeah, just stack flame buffets and, and pyroblast this guy down. But um, he does an incinerate, which is like the dark glare, where he does a lot of damage to you. So if it's available, then you can switch to frost form and do a ice block. But if not, and you get hit by it, it's not the end of the world. But it will do like uh, at least 20% of your health, more than likely. He often does it after the uh, emulate he just did, but he didn't that time. So I'm switching to fire and going to clear that debuff and start pyroblasting and stacking the buffets as well. Um, he puts a debuff, and this is part of the reason why I have this focus frame. Um, it's kind of hard to see, because he just it's an instant cast. But it's a little shadow debuff, and it increases damage a lot. So I try to get rid of that when it happens. 
um, and it definitely helps a lot. You basically don't take any damage with that off, and if you're if you have siphon life up, like I am right now, like he's just not getting me very low. There's the emulate. Got to clear that off using the uh, cleansing flame whenever you whenever that happens. There's the debuff I just got on me. And I'm gonna cleanse it again and switch to shadow because I want to get a death blast in. He happens to summon the eyes again, which is good for me. Good RNG. And sometimes the eyes have funky spawns. Some of them will spawn and then others will spawn later. So just wait till they all spawn before you shadow nova. I don't think I've been in ice form yet, but I do. He doesn't incinerate at some point, so you'll get to see that. I think it's right after this, yep. So clear that debuff, shift into ice, and then do the ice block. And frost nova, ice blast. And here you can go to either fire or shadow, whatever is uh, convenient. I went to shadow so I could do another death blast and heal myself. That's the, I think, the most important about this phase is just keeping yourself. If you get low, you, you, you probably want to go into shadow a bit more um, or a bit sooner and get those death blasts off because they heal you for a lot. So, yeah. I got a little unlucky because I went to shadow or went out of shadow and then he cast the eyes again so I get a bit low here but then I just switch right into uh, shadow and do a nova and then a death blast and it tops me off again and that um, cleansing fire will also get rid of those the eyes debuff so you can use that to to stop some of the incoming damage Especially if you have his debuff that increases shadow damage, those eyes will kill you pretty fast. I think that's pretty much it for this phase. Not much else. Just rinse and repeat. Um, sometimes it can get kind of dicey if you get unlucky. Um, this didn't happen in this video, but I think the worst thing is if you get a Siphon Life Resist, you won't be able to heal yourself in another 30 seconds. So just, if that happens, switch back into Shadow as soon as you can to try and get another Siphon Life off, or even stay in Shadow. Um, and yeah, those, those heals are really important. And remember to cleanse the debuffs, and I think that's it. I think oh, I'm able to switch out for this incinerate, but it was kind of close. Actually, I think I just eat it. So as you can see, that did a decent chunk of damage, but I'll just go into to shadow and heal up a little sooner than I usually do. Get rid of the debuffs. And then, yeah, I go into shadow at like 27 seconds. Usually it's more like 20 or 15. And now I'm back up to 100%, so... Oh, and he does another incinerate, but this time I'm able to switch to ice. So yeah, sometimes you can get kind of in a bad spot, but stay calm and it's, it's fine. You'll be able to heal up. Once he also glitched when he was doing his magnetic pull. I think they probably fixed it, but... Um, if that's the case, then you kind of have to sit right on him, and it's just worse in general, but um, 
he was resetting, so just stick right on his butt if that happens, and uh, everything else is the same, pretty much. And that's pretty much the kill. At this point, you can just probably stay in fire and finish him off. And that's Shartul. Good luck.